An amazing archaeological discovery will be made somewhere in the world today. It might even be happening right now while you're watching this video. If it does, you'll hear about it in our next one. For now, we're dealing with all of the astonishing finds that archaeologists have made in the past two years. Make yourself comfortable for this video treasure collection. The A1 is the longest road in the United Kingdom. It connects London, England to Edinburgh, Scotland and runs for over 400 miles. It's so old that part of it was built by the ancient Romans, which makes it a great place to go looking for Roman treasures. A multi-billion dollar project aimed at adding additional lanes close to London was ordered in late 2018. So archaeological surveys of the proposed area are being carried out before the work is done. So far, the archaeologists involved have turned up an incredible 177,000 Roman-era artifacts. Not all of them are significant or valuable, but the prize finds among the collection so far include a glass sculpture of the head of Bacchus, an amber carving of a man in a toga, a miniature iron sword still in its copper scabbard, and a significant quantity of Roman-era coins. So many items have been found that the archaeologists now wonder whether this might be a previously undiscovered Roman settlement. They'd like to spend more time digging for buildings and other evidence to support the idea, but the authorities want the project wrapped up so the new road can be built. It's a race against time. Speaking of the Romans, here's a remarkable Roman discovery that turned up under an abandoned movie theater in Verona, Italy in June 2021. It's a large building from the second century, and archaeologists think it might have been the ancient Roman equivalent of a grad hotel. The building appears to have been destroyed by fire many centuries ago, but the soot and ash have preserved what's left of it. Because of that, the building has earned the nickname Little Pompeii from the archaeologists working at the site. Thanks to the fire, we can still see the remains of the complex Hippocost system for underfloor and interwall heating, the mosaic tiles on the concrete floors, and the stunning frescoes on the walls of the building's largest room, which might have been the equivalent of a ballroom. The absence of an internal courtyard means this wasn't a villa or residential home and the large number of relatively small bedrooms has been taken as an indication of hotel usage. With underfloor heating and luxury banquet facilities, we guess you could say this was the Roman Hilton. Vases and other ceramics were commonly used as grave goods in the ancient Etruscan city of Vulci. But there's nothing common about this vase. It was found in the necropolis of Osterai del Parco inside the tomb of a 2,700-year-old Etruscan prince, and it's the work of an ancient Greek master painter. Behind the colossal door to the tomb, which was found in June 2021, a fantastic variety of goods were found, but the vase is the most special of all. Based on the style of painting applied to its surface, researchers are confident that it's the work of an anonymous artist, known only as the Painter of the Swallows. It becomes the 13th piece attributed to their unique handiwork. Precious little is known about this elusive artist, who's thought to have emigrated from Ionia to Vulci around 2,600 years ago. They would have either been very old or deceased by the time their vase was placed inside this royal tomb. That their work would be chosen for a royal burial tells us how respected they were as an artist, which makes it all the more frustrating that we don't know their name. Roman burials of warriors inside their chariots are relatively rare. Discoveries of burials of that kind that also include horses are even rarer. So it's always big news when it happens. As you've probably guessed by now, such a discovery has been made recently. It happened at the Genovaca du Brava site in Vinkovci, Croatia in June 2021. The burial is believed to be around 1,800 years old, so old in fact that it's fossilized. It's thought that the chariot burial is part of an even larger burial chamber belonging to an exceptionally wealthy Roman era family. The carriage is a two-wheeled affair known to Romans as a sisium, connected to two horses. Regrettably, it's likely that the horses were still alive when they were buried. Chariot burials had become antiquated even by the standards of 1800 years ago. 
but it's thought that they were granted to individuals and families of high prestige who were thought to have been of good service to their communities. It should be possible to identify who this family were if that's the case, but the process is likely to take time. Coin discoveries happen so often that we ignore them unless they're significant. As we've decided to include this one in our video, you should already know that it's a special one. More than 100 silver coins were recently found in a farmer's field in the rural northeastern reaches of Poland. The coins are an amazing 1,200 years old, and many of them bear Christian cross prints and Latin inscriptions. Based on the inscriptions and the style of the coins, they must have been minted in the Carolinian Empire. The ancient empire is largely forgotten today, but was once so large that it included Switzerland, Germany, France, and the north of Italy. Prior to the discovery of this hoard of coins, only three of their kind had ever before been found in Poland. Poland was never part of the Carolinian Empire, so the question of how the coins got here is unresolved. It's possible that they represent a ransom paid to the Vikings by a Carolinian king. Such payments were often made to the Vikings in the hope that it would put them off the idea of attacking towns, cities, or even whole countries. The ancient stone circle known as Stonehenge in England is probably more famous than it ought to be. There's no doubt that it's an impressive prehistoric monument, but many European countries have equivalent sites, and they're often more interesting. Take the German site of Ringheiligtum Pumelta, for instance. Aside from hosting a circle structure and playing host to human sacrifices, it was also the place that at least 100 families called home. The first signs of residential dwellings were identified at the site in May 2021, starting with two houses and quickly progressing to 20 before reaching 100 at the last count. The presence of residential properties at the ring site is curious, not least because of the brutal nature of the sacrifices that happened here. The multiple ditches and pits full of human remains within the ring structures contain people who seem to have been subjected to brutal attacks before they passed away, more akin to ritual beatings and punishments than sacrifices. Common sense tells us that families with young children would have wanted to be as far away from such activity as possible. But perhaps there was something unusual about the people who lived here. More research is required to answer that. During the first week of June 2021, archaeologists in China's Sichuan province confirmed the discovery of the remains of a bamboo mud cabin built on the Chengdu Plain approximately 4,500 years ago. That's a problem for the country's historians because their version of history doesn't have people building structures like this on the land until well over a thousand years after this one was built. The find raises new questions about the history of Baodun ancient town, which is where the discovery was made. As is implied by the name, Baodun ancient town is already known and celebrated by archaeologists as one of the most ancient settlements in Sichuan province, but we now have to consider the possibility that its history extends back in time further than anybody imagined. It might even mean that the town was around at the same time as the Shu Kingdom, the civilization that built the structures that are now known as the Shangxing Dui ruins some 4,800 years ago. Some Chinese historians resist the new findings, stating that there's not enough evidence. But if another prehistoric bamboo mud cabin is found, the history of the region will have to be torn up. More than 200 years ago, a British military officer explored and documented the Twirashmi Buddhist caves on a hillside in Nashik, India. In May 2021, we found out that he hadn't exactly done a thorough job. In fact, he missed a whole three caves. At this early stage, it's impossible to say how old the caves are. They might predate the other caves or may have been added later. Experts currently suspect they're more likely to be older which would mean that Buddhist monks dwelt within them in excess of 2,200 years ago. The newly discovered caves were found by chance by Salim Patel, a staff member of the Archaeological Survey of India who was only in the area to study the existing caves. 
He's responsible for the discovery of the two caves, with the third located during a subsequent wider search of the area. By looking inside the caves, we can see just how austere the monks' living conditions were. They're especially cramped when you consider the fact that two monks would have been assigned to each cave. This is likely to be the strangest archaeological discovery you see today, or perhaps any day. It's a belt-like 18th century device that used to belong to a monk, and it was found in Alst, Flanders, Belgium. The band of the artifact is made of metal and leather, with a leather ball at the end. You might be wondering what a monk was doing with such an exotic device, but if so, you're thinking along the wrong lines. The purpose of this unusual item was actually to suppress an injury. It's a hernia truss. The leather ball applied pressure to the weakened part of the groin and stopped the intestines from poking through. Archaeologists believe that they were once used all over Europe because they appear in so many medical documents, but they're extremely rare artifacts in terms of physical discoveries. In fact, this is the only one that's ever been found in Belgium. We know it belonged to a monk because it was found within the ruins of a Carmelite monastery that opened in 1497 and was forced to close in 1797 by French revolutionaries. The monastery's daily logs have also been found, which contain records of a brother Patrick who suffered from an inginal hernia in 1754. Looks like we've found our patient. The very fact that archaeologists open ancient graves is contentious among some people who see little difference between archaeology and grave robbing. Still, the act of opening the graves of your ancestors isn't a new idea. It was already happening in the medieval era. Contrary to what you might think, medieval grave openers didn't go about the task because they wanted to rob graves. A cooperative European team of archaeologists, including experts from England, Romania, Austria, France, Germany, and the Netherlands, have recently compared findings from their own countries and reached the same strange conclusion. From the 5th to the 7th centuries, thousands of European graves were opened more than once to remove or replace specific objects, move skeletons around, or in some cases, add dogs to an existing human burial. However, the most common item to be removed from a grave in this era is a sword or other weapon. The fact that weapons were retrieved from the dead while other valuables were left untouched suggests a previously unknown weapons shortage in Europe during this era and gives archaeologists a whole new topic to study. While there's always been speculation that the ancient Romans kept slaves in Britain, there's always been precious little evidence of that behavior, until perhaps now. In April 2021, the remains of a fettered man were found by builders working on a home extension in Rutland, England. The poor builders must briefly have thought that their client was a murderer. This wasn't a recent burial, though. As archaeologists later confirmed, these are the remains of a man who met his fate during either the 3rd or 4th century. He was left deep in a pit with iron shackles around his ankles. Historians think that shackles were usually removed from dead slaves so they could be used again. Either this man did something so awful that he was shackled even in death as a punishment, or there's another explanation for his plight. One such explanation might be a superstitious belief that the dead might rise again unless prevented from doing so, as is alluded to in a few ancient Roman manuscripts. Even if that's what's happened here, though, it's still the first direct physical evidence of the practice existing in Britain. If you work in an office, you might have a curse jar into which people put coins if they're caught using bad language. Here's a 2,300-year-old curse jar from Athens, Greece, one that worked in a very different way from the one in your office. The jar contains the carefully dismembered bones of a chicken and is covered with scrawled inscriptions all over its exterior surface. When translated, the text contains a curse intended to either paralyze or kill no fewer than 55 residents of Athens. Curse tablets are nothing new in Athens. They're found as thin sheets of lead buried underground quite regularly. 
but curse jars are much rarer. After writing his curse, the unknown owner of this jar then buried it with a large iron nail driven through it as a way of sealing the curse. Strange as it might seem, archaeologists believe that the curse was most likely written by the defendant of an impending court case. Trials were everyday events in ancient Athens, so a defendant might have wanted to curse the plaintiff, their witnesses, their families, and anyone else they are close to if they believed they'd gain an advantage from doing so. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.